So this is uh, Travis Johnson's art, the hegemony response. So this was about, um, I would say, I put together about 10 paintings. I think I got 10 in here of what I've been working on, a little bit of what I've been working on over the last, uh, I'd say two years. Um, and this, this piece right here, which is titled, If the Devil Only Had Horns, is a uh, canvas. And can everyone see that? So this piece is like a, is, is five by five, and it's a personal piece. Um, it's kind of like my childhood and has a lot of symbolism in it, very loosely painted and deals a lot with like family and growing up in Southern California being black and coming from black family and poverty and generational wealth not being passed down and um, just, uh, sorting through how how we survive, you know, and just a lot. I come from rural folks, and a lot of um, working um, working on the uh, on the land, and a lot of working with our hands, and a lot of uh, just labor. And so understanding that, and then a lot of religion was in there. And I realize now that religion was really a mechanism to just survive mentally to keep yourself grounded. So that's what this piece is about. And then in the, the uh, golden age of incarceration. So that's this piece here. So this is acrylic and on canvas. And this is just sitting with that idea of incarceration and kind of stepping away from the horror of it and just really looking at it from a uh, standpoint of a business and seeing the business and the, basically the, the product that black bodies have served in America. So this is sitting with that, and that's the deep narrative. On the technical side, there's like textiles in this, there's whatever I had on, around the studio that I could put on the canvas, I put it on there. And I think it was the first uh, canvas that I was working with where I created a black. I believe the black may have been created by a burnt umber and a Prussian blue, and then I was using Prussian, Prussian blue as well. So that was this piece, and it's the golden age of incarceration. Ask how big is that last one? That one, I believe, is actually I'm here now. I I can get it measured. I think it's like approximately. I think it's like thirty six by forty eight, maybe. Okay, thank you. Yeah, right in there. Yeah, and so then this is Jay Hendrix, and this is a. This is the most popular print that I have, um, that, I, that I created, uh, or a piece that has been turned into a print. And this is uh, just Jimmy, and Jimmy is just great for so many different reasons. What's interesting about this actual, the a large print that I sold was this one, we did it 100, 36 by 24, 36 by 24 is the last one. Uh, so I was off. Quite a bit on the one side and uh, this one was uh, when we sold it at a large scale the proceeds went to help uh, stop someone from being evicted so we were able to give 100 percent of the sale of the print uh, the original i still have and i haven't uh, gotten rid of it yet um, so i don't know if it, when that'll ever if ever go on sale this right here is a page from a book that i worked on la the last uh, 10 weeks um, it's a book around, it's a, like a graphic novel around uh, my ancestor, uh, my oldest ancestor, Alyssa Mothershed, where she lived 100 years as an enslaved person and then was freed at 105 and lived as a free woman. And she is one of the oldest ancestors that um, our family knows on my father's side. So I was working with kind of a life story and seeing that integration of my story, being a descendant of her, uh, kind of just work together as one narrative and and so there's a lot of images of myself growing up and just the home life and then the outside world coming through. I don't know how well people can see that if I zoom mm -hmm. in. So this is uh, illustration ink, um, ink on paper and I kept it black and white, you know, wanted to just really kind of honor the cartoon, the cartoon uh, Sorry, I'm all over the place with that. Uh, the cartoon art form and illustrator art form. 
This is acrylic on canvas. This is the great uh, BB King. Um, and using the light tones for the background and then the more uh, richer pigmentations for her skin. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one. This one, a lot of folks enjoy, and I enjoy it too. And then this was a piece that I retitled, Are There Any More Questions? So I did this in maybe 2018. No, 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 I'm sorry, 2019. And then to me, it felt like it had a whole new um, meaning now that we're in kind of like the social unrest that we're in and in the movement and the cultural shifts that we're in. So this is titled, Are There Any Questions? And then this piece uh, is, no, is in a permanent collection in Seattle. So it's, I no longer have it, but it speaks to um, just chasing your dreams and just putting that jackrabbit in the background, that country theme, a desert theme that I, you know, the, I've spent many years in the Mojave Desert. So it, it really um, is just speaking to that, speaking to spending time with the rabbits and coyotes and rattlesnakes and tumbleweeds and close to the earth and with the Joshua trees and greasewood. Uh, plants in the high desert of Southern California. So this piece speaks to that and then the challenges of life and just facing them. And then morning devotion in a time of war. Um, this is spray paint and acrylic exterior paint on a sheet of metal. And I'm not sure if this piece exists. I did it in California. And I don't know if it's still around. I've been checking around and I haven't got an answer yet, but I love it. And so I wanted to include it into uh, this, this group of work. I did this in 2018. And this is about three feet tall, maybe a foot and a half wide. And this piece was done, this is Whisper to the Chief. This was done like either the day before or the day after. I was, this was the main piece I was working on. And this was during the Standing Rock protest and all of that, that whole situation, I wanted to make a piece in tribute to them. And it's Whisper to the Chief, and you see the Twitter bird, or a Twitter-like bird whispering to the Chief, and just seeing that protest inter integrated with social media and how we consume these protests, like via video um, and, and, and tweets and documentation with our phones, just sort of speaking to that. Having more. And then this is war paint. So this is uh, three feet by four and a half, I think. And it's um, acrylic on canvas. And I like to play with a sort of androgynous. Uh, character, but leaning more maybe towards female, and um, the idea of just mentally preparing yourself for war and war paint, that's always fascinating to me, and just looking at that kind of old narrative um, of war paint, um, and just what that means on like a painting always, it kind of comes, face painting tends to show up in my work quite a bit, it's a, it's, it's, it's really a weapon of defense, you know, to, in, in a, in a way. Um, so there's more on that, but that's, this is war paint. And I then. I have a quick question. I'm sorry, another one. No, no, go for it. Um, whisper to the chief. Um, I don't know if you were saying, I was so impressed with the image that I, I actually stopped listening to you for, for, <laughs> for Yeah, I get it. I was, uh, I was wondering what's that painted on? That was on a teepee that my brother made. Wow, all right, thank so you. Yep, yeah, yeah. So this one is um, an orange jumpsuit, and then you have the cotton. So this is, again, dealing with the prison, uh, the prison, uh, like, concept, and, you know, the prison business, and then cotton in the background, and then this, and this is titled orange jumpsuit, and then I really skin, um, I love painting my kind of skin, black skin, and just like the chocolate tones. Um, and then to the right of it is, I can't remember what that piece is titled, because I, I think it was originally titled the work text that is on the canvas, 
I'm not sure what I need, but I think I changed it to something related to social media um, and just the, the way that we uh, present ourselves very vulnerable on social media. So I wanted to sit with that and, and kind of speak to that visually. Um, I have to honestly I have to go back and look at the title because I can't, I started thinking about a deeper narrative as I sat longer with the painting. That tends to happen in my process is I'll, I'll rename things when the meaning comes clearer or I'll paint over it if the meaning no longer, if the original meaning no longer resonates with me. That's a bit of my pra uh, process and practice. And then like, this is one that was titled Silly Little Nightmare. And it wasn't finished for several months and weeks. And then I went back in and finished it. And this is, I feel like it's done right now. I'm still not 100% happy with everything in the painting, but most of it I am. And then this was titled The Boss, and this is a mixed media. This is uh, oil stick, watercolor, acrylic, and then acrylic medium. So really enjoyed just the color tones on this and the narrative, which is, narrative is really important in my work. I uh, love story, was raised on story, and uh, just keep being drawn to story and narrative. This is accepting the divinity within you. So this piece I started in Tacoma in another studio. A friend of mine, his name is Bill Taylor. He's a, a Northwest abstract or figurative artist. Uh, he was doing shows around the time that I was born. <laughs> so I was doing this, I had the honor to do this, start this piece in his studio and then finished it in my studio at home. And then this last one is, I believe this is the last one, is St. Travis LaVon Johnson. And this is my father. And this is um, the best human being that I know. And it was great to finally capture him. And this is acrylic on canvas and oil stick. And there may be another medium in there. I'm not sure. I don't think there's any pastel. So I think it's just oil stick and acrylic. And that is a little chunk of my work. Well, marvelous. Thank you, thank you. That's impressive. I have a question. I so, lights, right? I, I'm completely bowled over by your images. They're so powerful and the um, and the the expressive marks you make and the depth. It's, uh, I'm really impressed. I, I'd actually like to do a show at some point at my little home gallery. I know you're probably too big for us, but. but no, it, no, I, I stay flexible. <laughs> it's you a good. Me, we'll figure it out. <laughs> you let me know. All right. Um, just get that, that out of the way. But um, I was wondering, where do you start from? Where do you, uh, and we were kind of booked up next year, but after that would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so where do you start from? Like when you, because you obviously materials are, are important to your work and you involve the materials and it's in I kind of work in a similar way myself that the, the materials are integral to the the um the communication that you want to put out there and I'm wondering what starts first is it an image in your head or is it um like a, an occurrence or is it um um is it the materials themselves? What, what's the initiator of, of your art pieces? I think ultimately there's a level of painting and thinking about painting and thinking about images and creating images that I have going in my head all the time, whether I'm in front of a canvas or not. So my practice is I don't sketch Typically, like the only painting out of all of those paintings that I showed that I actually sketched a initial drawing was the BB King and the um, the uh, Whisper to the Chief. Everything else is just the the painting is here. The the ideas, the thoughts flow, and I don't even try and keep track of them. I just sit down in front of the canvas, and whatever comes up at that time, that's what I put on 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 the canvas and a lot of times i'm not quite ready to emotionally go there uh, i found that was kind of like 2018 was a lot of things coming up and not really ready to sit with them and the same thing i was a little bit um 
uh, more just emotionally available in 2019. And then I feel like I'm a step further in 2020. Um, and so for me, I don't do any pre-drawings. I sketch a lot in my personal sketchbook as a journal, you know, as kind of like a visual journal. Um, so I'm drawing constantly, but when I sit down to paint, I don't take any time to do a preliminary drawing. I just want to focus on putting, um, taking myself to a place where I feel like I don't know anything. I don't understand, uh, like a complete new approach to paint. And I just put down whatever paint is around me and whatever colors and whatever is on the surface emotionally gets on the canvas. And that's, that's, I think the best way I can describe my, my practice. And I'm, I'm start, I like to start with a blank canvas and just start literally putting, putting paint on the canvas. So you're thinking on your feet? Yes. Uh, well, maybe I think with the marks, but sometimes I've been thinking about maybe the feeling and the, maybe the narrative or a concept the entire day. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, if I start painting, like at the end of the day, a lot of times I paint at night, I don't really do morning painting that much, you know? So at the end of the day, I, when I get in front of that canvas, whatever I've been, has been sitting in my chest, and I really sit, I've, I've learned to, uh, with the help of my sister, to really look at, like, if you feel anxiety or a, a good thought or memories, to see where it is in your body and, and really just sit with that and let the colors and let the paint and the strokes reflect whatever you're physically feeling and where it sits in your body. So it's a real um, therapeutic practice and I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, 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 I have two more, sorry. Um, yes, oh no, I'm fine, I'm open, <laughs> it's good to go. Um, so I notice um, there's a lot um, of references to social media, you mentioned the cartoon, reference which is a useful media that people use to get images out there in the in the media and 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 it has a it's a quick and ready medium that has a broad range and it, it's attention grabbing which i like that about it and i noticed on the facebook one the reference and she had that facebook blue face and i you know there's things that i picked up Personally, that um, and I was wondering, is that does is that every single painting you do? Are there like certain for you emotion? You don't have to tell me them. That's fine. I was just wondering if there's certain things that is is it is it true of every single painting you do, or or uh, or just given ones? That that social media comes through. Mm, the you know the importance of the there's kind of a language that you use in their color wise and and yeah, I ha I hadn't really thought about that I, you know, it depends what, it, like if I'm in that painting, I see some of the consistencies, but I haven't really gone back and thought about the, that specific, excuse me, consistency. Um, social media to me seems to come up a lot because it's really, you know, and I, it might be because I'm old enough to remember a time without social media. So I, and it feels, I feel like I feel that very distinctly this time where social media was not in our life. We had picture books and we had TV, we had encyclopedias, and now we have this like infinite level of, 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 of images, you know, infinite level of images that we have access to. And it's, you know, I get overstimulated where I'm just like, okay, I can't even, you know, so even keep track of things visually. So I think for certain, I think when I think about my childhood, it would probably, you see less iconography, if you will, or less, less symbolism of social media. But if I'm in that space emotionally, but if I'm kind of current, I think, so. yeah, social media is going to come through. The, 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 probably even if we really dissected it, the, 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 the format, the composition would be very, um, uh, a mirror of social media is if you look at social media and how we have become experts at lighting and experts at like composition when we put everything we put we make sure it's at the right angle and we we know what to do we like we're so informed now we're we're 
as David Hockney said, we love creating images. So I think we'd see even more of that, probably more than I ever even noticed. And uh, one more, one more question, then I'm out. Um, what, who are your influences? I, I, I see a lot of obviously social media references, but um, other than that, who are your biggest influences? The first, the first influence, early influence would have been any of uh, Bill Watson or Watterson, Calvin and Hobbes. Oh yeah, the creator of Calvin and Hobbes. Watson, that yeah. that shaped my entire life, and then uh, Thomas. Benton Hart, huge story, huge narrative. I would look at those paintings and just get lost. Norman Rockwell was huge. Um, and then now Bua, Justin Bua, out of, he's in LA but was in New York. He, his storytelling ability, and he's a brilliant man as an artist, just his thinking is just, he's brilliant. And then um, Kira Walker, Carrie James Marshall. Um, Kara Walker, I think, is the most important artist of our time, hands down. She, I think she's one of the most important artists, like, and she's living and breathing right now, creating work. Um, Carrie James Marshall would probably be next. He's, he's such a, I feel like he's like, He's an incarnation of like three other three other artists, and then uh, Michael. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get his last name right, Hoftka, I believe. Um, but he is. I met him on Instagram, and we talk on a regular, we uh, kind of day to day. Probably every other day we're talking, and they have been our conversations and, and email exchanges have been so rich. Um, so those are like my top ones that come to mind of influences. Okay, I have one more question. Sure. Uh, the Instagram, what's your Instagram account? Travis Johnson Studios. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, well, I'm not sure how I can follow all of that, but um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about you and your story because I'm here in Southern California and I'm hearing that the TP was 28, or the the metal piece was 2018 so you haven't lived in Olympia very long no How did you get here and why yeah so I moved up here like 14 years ago from Southern California originally born and raised in Southern California and moved up here 14 years ago and um, was here for many many years and um, then had some health issues I thought were health issues, but they I was just working too hard. And thank goodness, ended up going back to California for about a year and saw that that didn't quite uh, pan out. And but I had a lot of friends here in the Northwest. There were dear friends here in Olympia, and they uh, encouraged me uh, to come back up. And so came back up. So I've been here about it was 2018. March 18th of 2018, I was uh, moved back up here to, and moved here to Olympia with the folks that uh, I had met, you know, prior and became just like family with them. And then uh, just have been operating, you know, just was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to really put our flag on the ground. And um, I had a whole, like, I don't even know if you call it series. I had a whole like year long, I would say project planned in California, but when everything just didn't work out to just live there, I couldn't find a living space. And I knew I had so many friends and connections up here. I was like, I can go up to Washington and get plugged back in and get this thing going. So it was kind of like me being on a couch, practically homeless, living out of my car and saying, you know what? I'm not going to go through this anymore. I need to create. And so it was a year process of, putting my life back together um, and uh, uh, putting, designing everything so that I could actually create and just paint and draw and do this thing. Um, so that's, it's been a, that's been a, like a, probably a five year journey total doing that. Um, I'm the second oldest of five, <laughs> that's, that, you know, five siblings, um, uh, singing all over the place in the early days of Southern, uh, all over, based out of Southern California. 
and just come from, as I look at it now, I really like to name it. I just come from rural black folks, you know, country. My dad was from the Midwest and my mom was from Bakersfield, California. And she, you know, grew up picking uh, watermelons and, 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 and potatoes and cotton and corn. And her father did the same thing. And, and just hard, like slave labor is, and just folks that figured out a way. And it's funny because education was, like huge for them you know so everybody went on all my uncles who did all that labor went on to become lawyers and doctors and so forth and so on um so coming from really really awake country black folk and i think that's 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 a good way to uh, sum up me and some of the hair the ancestral work that i'm doing that's what's coming up for me uh, so that the series that you were doing in California, I noticed, um, I kind of um, looked at that show that you did at Heart Cider. Was that oh, yes. part of that series then or was that different? And it, it looked like it was like, like uh, well, you showed us some ink drawings, but a lot more washy. This was really like line drawing that I saw. Yes. Wait, which one was line drawing that you saw? Um, the Heart Cider, at least the one image oh, yes. from the Heart yes. Cider exhibition. Yes. Yes, so that 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 uh, was the probably the show that was featured was all drawings and not so many paintings. Now the desert. Here's the thing about the desert, the desert project that I was working on. It never came to fruition. So that was the what we were going to do was do pieces like that. We're on that TP. We were going to do pieces like that all over the desert mm -hmm. and just big out public and just all over. Um, the next project I had was this, um, what is it called? Jacuzzi shell that was turned upside down. I wanted to paint it as a donut where you could probably only see it from the sky. <laughs> and it was in the middle of this field, which was some of my father's land. Um, and he's, he's passed on, but it was, uh, it was on his land, our land, family land. And that was going to be the next one. And then we were going to go around and maybe, you know, see if people wanted to open their land up to do these desert, these huge desert public art pieces. But it never, it never um, got off the ground. That's too bad. It sounds like a pretty amazing vision. Right, kind of like right. this massive be... installation piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A desert, just like a desert, like desert X, X gorilla style, right? <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. Um, Travis, I didn't know if you wanted to show any of your studio. I remember when we did our run through, you kind of panned me around and you are very busy in there. And so anyway, no pressure at all, but if you'd like No, to we're fine. This is the current piece that I'm working on. I was working on this last night. Um, so this section over to the leg. So this piece, I am, uh, not a hundred percent happy with i'm happy with everything until we get to this character um and i i think she may disappear so and i have a whole nother concept for this whole section um but this is uh was currently on the easel and you'll see this as you said before this has come some of that same kind of symbolism and style of faces keeps repeating itself um so this is this is uh, acrylic and then i have some oil stick uh on the table there just the trim uh it gives it a nice pop um, and so i'm really kind of looking at how the edges are handled this i was really conscious on the edges um and then the prussian blue is it may read as black um but it's prussian blue and then when i do want to do a black i do the burnt that burnt umber and mix it um with the prussian blue and it makes a beautiful warm just thick black um, hey travis i'm yep. picking up a lot of impasto there how are you building up the the surface is it are you oh, just painting right. over and over or in this no, no. for you yeah no that is so so this was probably four or five other paintings prior Yep. So this 
you see it, you see, I don't know if this could, I think I got it. I don't know if you can see the texture. Yeah. How thick that is. It's so awesome. It's, yeah, so, and this is, I I go, I don't know if I have, I might have, I might have one. Well, this, I did this yesterday. This is, uh, and this has sheets of paper in it. Um, just whatever I can find, whatever's around me. So this gets real thick. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, here we go. So this, this has a little bit of weight to it. <laughs> this is, uh, this has, this has uh, strips of canvas. There's some paintings over there. That one actually has, is nice. Has what is nice that paint. circle in the middle, Travis? What is it, a lid of some kind? Yep, that's a lid to a, um, that's a lid to, I don't, oh, this, yeah, that's, that's the lid to this <laughs> paint can. I'll take this one. Whatever's handy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, they, who knows what'll end up. So this one is not done, and I think it's upside down, actually. But I love, I love where it's going. Yeah. And this is strips of canvas. So this is cut up strips of canvas. Put other, like if I, I'll, I'll buy like a damaged canvas. And I, I love damaged canvas because I'll, canvases, because I will use them. Actually, right now I'm seeing a portrait. This right here, actually, as it sits in front of me, what I see is Superman. Um, <laughs> so that's what I see. I see as clear as can be. So I might do a spin. I think I will do a spin on Superman on this. If I, but then I might lose interest, you know, because <laughs> uh, Superman, you know, can be problematic. Uh, but uh, it's definitely this definitely could be a portrait. And I I have been seeing a tree, and a forest scene for the longest time. But here we are, you know. Um, so yeah, those are a few a few. Um, let's see if we got. This is a stack right here of just kind of what and we can pull out. Yeah, we can pull out uh, maybe a couple of these. Mm -hmm. Hello to your lovely assistant. Hi. This is the, the well, this, this that's, uh, that yep, that's, that's my, one of my father. That one actually probably will be going, going out. That's, yeah, that's a good example of, of, yeah. The, the accepting your divinity. Yep. So this one, this was, uh, this is oil, oil stick on the black. It's gesso, acrylic medium, uh, and then acrylic. I think that's it. But I don't know if you can see the. Yeah, yeah I, I really, I enjoy those, those, you know, just getting in there, you know, and really building it up. So the gesso really helps me build up, oh, thank you so much. The gesso really helps me build up texture, and there was one I'm thinking about, I don't know where it is, I haven't looked at it in a while, I think it might be right Yep, this is it. Sorry about that if I'm all over the place. So this is not yet done, but this, um, I don't know if you can see how, how high mm -hmm. that's sitting off the canvas. This, I mean, you could, you could grab on, you could literally grab the painting. And this is gesso as well. Um, strips of canvas and probably some other stuff that I forgot about. A bit of a, like a historical time capsule of junk around the studio space. Um, this piece is actually kind of sitting with me right now. I haven't looked at it in quite some time. Yeah, there's quite a bit in there. Uh, you know, because, okay, so this is something that me and Michael were talking about the other night, about sitting with your art and it having new meaning after you sit with it. And then it has new meaning when you compare it to other, 
other other pieces of work. And now I'm just noticing there was a bit of, uh, I don't know, Christy works with, this is like the velvet. Is it velvet? This is some of your velvet that you cut with your work. I don't know what you were doing though. There's a black velvet that you, and I just included it in. Oh, some fabric scrap? Yeah, yeah. So this is some fabric scrap. I'm just <laughs> noticing it right here. Just that little strip was a, was a fabric scrap that was included. So it, but it adds texture. So it, it worked as kind of a sponge and um, uh, foam, if you will, but it adds a wonderful texture. And I love subtle textures. I, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with textures. But Chrissy's always working. She does a lot of paper quilling and what's the, the other? Yarn? Yes. The needle yes, needle felting and then um, costumes. So she does a lot of that. So if I see something that I know is trash, it'll probably end up on the uh, <laughs> canvas. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of my process, but yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what. Uh, so yeah, this is it's kind of a, a hot mess, but it's like the only way that I can think. Um, and then it gets cleaned up a little bit, and then it goes right back to this mm -hmm. version of everything all over the place. Um, so there's a couple of things in the comments. Um, I want to read you, Travis. Um, Lynette said, have you heard of Creative Capital, art grants for big projects? And that was when you were talking about your desert project. Um, I went ahead and put your website in the um, comments if anyone wants to head there. Um, and I'll try to drop your Instagram in too. Um, and then Stephanie said, love the faith. And then she also said, so sorry to have to break off. Nice getting to know you and your work. And Lynette says, awesome stuff. Thank you, exclamation point. There are a lot of exclamation points. Love it. And yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, any last questions for Travis? Well, I'm just so happy to meet you and see your work. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah, hope to see you again. Yes, hopefully. And see your work around. Yes. Thanks Submit for coming to on. shows and stuff. <laughs> I missed that last bit. Submit to shows. Oh, and yes, to, yes. To the yes. city and art walk and all that. Yes, yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, so I'm glad we could um, schedule this. Um, Travis, I know we've been talking for a little while, so I'm glad it worked out for today. Um, this was really super fun. I'm glad to connect with you in general, um, so maybe we'll work on some stuff in the future. Also, Lynette was being um, very modest. Her gallery is like the, the hot gallery of Olympia. <laughs> no, I, I love, yeah, I love it all. I love it all. You know, it's so important, I think, for doing this work that you're doing to be the bridge to artists. Uh, I find that it's just so, um, engineers kind of have their, it's a, it's a ABC pathway to becoming an engineer and then supporting each other and there's institutions and there's an economy. But with artists so many times we're creating it. And, um, and so this, this side of the work is so critical. So, uh, it's it's so important, you know. So I'm I'm very grateful to it, and and look forward to collaborations and um, just thinking, talking, and creating about art and what that does for people. You know, um, I believe we truly become better people when we create work. Totally. Well, thank you so much, Travis. We always do a round of applause at the yes. end. Right on. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, folks. Yes. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day, y'all.